and welcome back to my channel. My name is Eddie, as known as Mode to Skin, where I cover skincare, Korean skincare, and some mental health aspects. So welcome back, and today we're going to be talking about a launch that everyone was super excited for, and that is the Pareto Daily Go-To Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus PA++++. So the reason this was such an exciting drop was basically if you remember, Pirito had a holy grail sunscreen that was a holy grail for many people, and that was their Centella Green Level sunscreen, both their scented version and their unscented version. And if you're not aware, there was a whole fiasco with Pirito where the sunscreen did not meet the expectation of the SPF that was being marketed, along with a lot of Korean sunscreens. And out of all the brands, Pareto was the one that dealt with the whole fiasco of the SPF not actually being SPF 50 well. One of the brands that actually said, we're in the wrong, we messed up, it had to do with the labs, we're gonna do better. Give us feedback, how do we improve? We're also gonna have other, other testing, and I'm gonna get into that point soon. But I'm going to review this sunscreen and I'm also going to discuss a little bit of what the brand is saying, what they did, and basically what other content creators are saying about the brand and the sunscreen. Before we get into that, I'm going to ask you to please hit that subscribe button as well as like this video and leave a lovely comment below. Join in this discussion. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you would like me to do. All right, let's start. Now I'm going to discuss what other content creators have discussed, but then I'm going to do the review where I'm going to do part one, application, second, reapplication on top of itself, and thirdly, how this works with makeup. I'm going to put chapters down below so you can skip through this whole intro slash explanation of what's going on and what other content creators have said, and if you just want to see the review of the sunscreen. So there's a lot of creators that have been discussing this sunscreen. And we have Glow by Ramon, we have David Chiang, I believe is how you pronounce it. We have Mad About Skin, all discussing this sunscreen. So the first individual I want to talk about that brought up some really good points is Mad About Skin. And he basically brought up two points, but mainly they're centered around trust. Trust in Purito, trust in what they're doing now, and trust in their word. So when it comes to the first point he made, which, you know, I agree with him, um, but before I go into it, I do want to say that he and I and a lot of other creators agree, you know, this is a trustworthy sunscreen. So let's not even go there. It's got verified testing in the United States, and um, so let's not even worry about that. So he made a really good point. Pareto really did a good job. You know, they weren't mean to its customers. They were very responsible. They took the blame. They, you know, were very transparent with us. And they said, okay, we're going to get more testing. We're going to make sure this goes through all the exams, all the testing to make sure it does pass the SPF level. But apparently they did not register in Korea, they only registered here in the States. They did their testing in Hong Kong and are selling this sunscreen here. And basically that means that in Hong Kong compared to Korea, they don't have as intense rules and laws and testing and verification. So it's easier to get verified in Hong Kong than it is in Korea's testing. So he, that's a really interesting point he brought up. Um, I'm assuming eventually they're going to talk about that and discuss that on why they did it, but it still does seem shady. You know, it makes you go, hmm, should I trust this brand and this sunscreen? And another point that he made is that what we were told here in the States, in Western, opposed to what was told in Korea was completely different. That here we were told, okay, you know, they we did the sunscreen and we sent it in to be made and, you know, we were misled. When this all happened, this is very unfortunate. We're not going to make sure to do third-party testing. Okay, fine. But what was told to Korea apparently was a different story. It wasn't that, oh, no, what an unfortunate occurrence. It was, okay, so when we were making the sunscreen, they made it for us, and then we were like, oh, we want something more cosmetically elegant, something more lightweight. So they turned it from a cream into a lotion. And when that occurred, instead of going to test it again, they just said, it's okay, it was SPF 50 when it was a cream, 
And the point is, when you change something from a cream to a lotion, the consistency, consistency changes. So you have to do a test on if the sunscreen is still that SPF rating. And we found out later on, it wasn't, it was SPF 19. So that transition from cream to lotion, and they had the opportunity to test it out and see if it was the SPF rating. Apparently, it was not the SPF, and they did not say that it was their bad. You know, obviously, in that sense, it was kind of their bad because they did not test it after changing it from a cream to a lotion. They just went for it. The two points he made um, regarding uh, trusting Purito, but... With the sunscreen, it is verified. It has been tested. So don't worry about the reality of what their sunscreen is now. It's just there's this discussion around Purito's um, trustworthiness. But what do I have to say about it? I think that was very interesting. And I think, you know, there's a difference between a brand trying to sell something and consumers trying to protect their skin. So as long as the consumer is very intelligent and we make sure brands know they're gonna be exposed if they don't actually do the accurate testings and don't actually give a product that has what they're marketing, they're gonna be in trouble. So the fact that this is verified goes to show that the consumers gotta be on it. Okay, so that is kind of like the trustworthiness Pareto part of it. Now we're gonna go into how it looks and how it performs. So there's been two other content creators I was really interested in the review of the sunscreen and that was Glow by Ramon and David Chiang. And they're both two content creators I really trust when it comes to sunscreen reviews and just how it works. So when it came to their thoughts, now they thought that the finish on this was rather radiant and dewy. Glow by Ramon rather enjoyed it, David Chiang, didn't really like it, thought it was more shiny or greasy than radiant or dewy. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts and you're gonna see applications and everything, so stay tuned for my thoughts and my review. But basically, that's what they said, that it might be too radiant for some people. And they both agreed that it was rather lightweight. So now we're gonna go into my review. So when it comes to this sunscreen, Basically, the ingredients in here are going to be what we had in the past sunscreen, and that is Centella Asiatica extract and all four components of the Centella plant. No niacinamide, no vitamin E, no other fancy schmancy ingredients. Those are basically the only skincare ingredients in here, and I'm for it. I love Centella. And with this sunscreen, it actually is rather soothing. And I actually enjoy putting it on because I know by the end of the day and during the day, it's going to keep my skin soothed and help repair my skin and just keep the redness at bay. So when it comes to this sunscreen, it is lightweight and soothing, which I love. My acne-prone individuals will love this. All right, day one. All right, so as you can see in the footage, I am applying the sunscreen with the three-finger method. And off the bat, I'm gonna tell you, it reminded me a lot of their green level sunscreen. It was very similar in texture and creaminess. And of course, I did notice it had to be rubbed in a little bit more than the obviously green level one we all loved. Obviously, I'm gonna be comparing this to that one. Um, but the reason it didn't is because this is a combination sunscreen. It has that Uvino A+, Tinosorb S, Uvino T150, and that titanium dioxide in there. So this is a combination sunscreen. For some, titanium dioxide might give a white cast, so I was really interested if this would do that. But when I first applied it, at first I thought, okay, it might, but then I blended it in, started tapping it in, and disappeared. It disappeared. So for me, it did not give a white cast, as you can see in the footage, and I'm a medium tan complexion. So it really was just like that one, just a little bit thicker. But all in all, when I first applied it, I really enjoyed it, and I love the immediate radiance it gives to the skin. It just gives you that dewy, glassy, radiant look that I love. But I do agree, oily skin individuals might not like that unless they're oily and want that dewy look. But dry skin people, honestly, this could honestly be like your moisturizer and sunscreen in one. But if you really want that dew and you really want that hydration, still going with your moisturizer. The combination and acne prone individuals will love this because it does not feel heavy, but it does give you that nice radiance and bouncy skin. Of course, 
course, you know, it's combination, so it is going to sit on top of the skin a little bit. It's not going to fully absorb like a fully chemical sunscreen. And I will say there was no tackiness when I first applied this, so that was a huge plus. So the moment you put this on, it really lives up to the name, Daily Go-To Sunscreen. Like, it's a go-to because I don't think twice about it. I don't think, oh, this is going to sting my face. It's alcohol-free. Oh, this um, pills. It doesn't pill. Oh, it feels heavy. It doesn't feel heavy. So it really lives up to the name. It's a daily go-to sunscreen. No fuss, no muss. You put it on and makes your skin look really radiant in a really nice dewy way. So if you like dewy, you're gonna love this. If you don't and you like matte, you might not like this. Um, you can powder it down, of course, but this is not gonna be anywhere close to matte. If anything, natural to dewy, but more on the dewy side. So first application and day one was a pass. Okay, day two. So reapplication. So we put this on top of itself. So when we reapply, we're really answering the question, is it going to peel on itself or is it gonna feel heavy or is it gonna build up white cast? So we're gonna go in order. First of all, it did not feel heavy. It just glided on like the first time. So there was a pass there. Now, did it pill on top of itself? Nope, it did not pill. I did notice it got maybe just a little bunchy where my hair grows, my beard area, but, and I don't have a beard. It's just, I had hair that day. I didn't shave. <laughs> I just had to blend it in a little bit more. So if you have a beard, just um, be aware of that. You might have to do a little bit more blending than normal. And with reapplication, you know what? It, because it's radiant, I thought, okay, it's going to be even more radiant. But you know what? It just brought back the radiance that was there in the morning when I first applied it. And if you think it's going to make you look oily, no. It did not make me look oily. It just brought back that radiance. And did it build a white cast to that titanium dioxide? So that was, was something I was worried about. But no, it did not. Like... I was worried because when I first applied it, I could see kind of that streaky look and I went, oh no, that means it's going to build up. But no, that was just part of the blending in. So it did not build up white cast for myself, especially if you're dragging down the neck. But this is one of those sunscreens that I don't even think about giving me a white cast. Even when I pull out my phone for a selfie, like literally a minute after blending it in, I don't look like I have a white cast. It's not like it takes time to sink in. It literally takes seconds in blending in to just become one with your skin. So this combination sunscreen is really nice. Day two, reapply upon itself. Beautiful. All right, so day three. How does this work under makeup? So I used a new drop that I've been using, and that's the Sunny Days um, Tinted Sunscreen SPF 30. It's a tinted sunscreen, but it can also be built up to be like makeup. And if you use the full three fingers, it'll look like makeup. So it's more of the makeup skin tint side than it is the tinted sunscreen side. So I applied this, and then I put that on top. And honestly, it just made the do the glow, the radiance even more. Like if you want dewy glass skin, using a tinted sunscreen or a skin tint or something dewy on top of this, it's just gonna make the dew go even more. And as you can see from the footage of me applying it, it went on phenomenally. It just went on top of this very nicely. I had no complaints, no pilling, no weird, um, you know, attaching to dry patches, none of that. So after I put it on, I was ready to see how the day went. And of course, that sunscreen isn't really meant to be transfer resistant or transfer proof. So I just wanted to see initially how it kind of felt on top of this. And nothing went wrong with it. Um, if I were going to put something on top of this, I wouldn't really second guess like, oh, is this going to improve the longevity of the skin tint or whatever kind of makeup I'm wearing. Honestly, this just helps up the do. But because I'm not like a foundation wearer, I don't really have thoughts about, you know, does this extend uh, makeup wear? Does this help with blush or bronze or any of those things? So mainly when I look into makeup and a sunscreen, I look, does it go on well? Does it break it down during the day? Does it feel like it's sliding off? And I felt none of those things with the sunscreen. Like this sunscreen is honestly something I would wear if I knew I was gonna wear a tinted product on top of this. So when it comes to this and makeup, honestly, it doesn't do anything wrong with it. It does just fine.
So that is my testing of the daily go-to sunscreen of Purito SPF 50 plus, PA plus, 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 plus. And I really enjoyed it. Honestly, I love the radiance of it. I love the dew of it. I love how easy it is to apply. Now there is one con and here it is. It kind of stings my eyes, which is weird, right? This has three UV filters that have never bothered my eyes and it has titanium dioxide, which doesn't bother eyes. So I'm really interested in why this bothered my eyes. I've heard, I haven't heard anyone discuss this topic. No one has said it bothers their eyes, but I've tried this around the eyes, on top of the eyelids, without touching my eye, eyes at all. And it still kind of bothers my eyes like an hour after application. It's not intense, it's not watery, it's not um, irritating, it, nor is it necessarily sensitizing, it's just, I feel like my eyes are going like this. I'm going, what is that? And it's very similar to when I wear Western, usual Western chemical sunscreens. Now, like I said, I haven't really heard um, that sensitization in the eyes from other people. So it might be something that affects very little people, um, such as myself. So if you've tried this and it actually bothers your eyes just a little, sound off below, let me know. I'd be really interested because I've heard nothing in for that comment. Does it prevent me from wanting to wear this? No, not at all. I just know it's going to bother my eyes a little, but not like enough to bother me. It's just something odd. It's interesting. And I'm actually going to investigate that. Um, I'm assuming they had to use a higher percentage of a chemical UV filter that might do that when it's used in a higher percentage. So I'm going to investigate that and I will update you guys. Speaking of which, please follow me on my Instagram. If you guys ever want to get micro updates on stuff, um, Right here, I'm gonna put it here, add mode to skin. But definitely, I'm gonna check that out. It's very interesting. But that's literally the only con with this. I love the sunscreen. And that is the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. All in all, I really like this sunscreen and I would honestly buy it again. And I would gift this to anyone who wants a dewy, radiant skin or dewy, radiant base before they put on their makeup. It is so nice, I really love it, and I can see this being applied with a beauty sponge if you want to put it on top of makeup, you know, reapply your sunscreen that way. This would, it's still creamy enough to do that. All right, thank you for joining me. Remember to please hit that subscribe button and like this video, and leave a comment below on your thoughts of this video. Did I miss anything? Do you find the whole weird, trusting, Purito thing interesting? What's going on there? Do you think they deserve you know, to forgive and forget, what do you guys think? Are you guys gonna keep trying their skincare? I know I am, I know I'm gonna still try them because I really do like their formulations. And even though that is a little sketchy, I'll just keep my eyes out. And as always, as consumers, as skinfluencers, people who are buying stuff from them and testing out their stuff, we're gonna keep them in check. So, that being said, thank you for joining me and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.